And Chess.com is here with the 2018 U.S. Women's Champion International Master Nazi Pekidzi, who won in an Armageddon game. I have to ask you, that was a pretty tense playoff. Why didn't you go into the confessional booth? <laughs> I didn't have time. <laughs> that was very intense. I mean, I'm happy I got to play Armageddon after the first game, but uh, it is much harder than I thought it would be. The first game wasn't your best effort, and she almost toyed with you a little bit. I mean, your king was walking to the queen's side, back to the king's side, back to the queen's side. Was it especially difficult in the sense that you're, you were struggling for so many moves in that game? It was. I think she played so I mean, in the opening, I got a position that I wanted, and then I completely blundered bishop before, and I lost the pawn. That was uh, disappointing at first, and then she didn't give me a chance. She played so well, or, or at least so, I think. Um, she just outplayed me in every way possible, and that made me <laughs> feel pretty terrible um, to lose like that. I sense you missed bishop before. Did you also miss queen takes a7? Your reaction suggested maybe you did. No, I didn't miss it. I just thought that that was a little too risky for her, maybe, because it was giving me some chances, but it turns out I didn't have any chances anyways. Fifteen minutes are, are uh, used between the games. What were you thinking about in those 15 minutes after the first loss? I was just trying to forget the previous game and um, calm myself and focus on the next game and uh, try to just improve um, what I did wrong in the last game. Did you have a plan going into the day in case you lost round one and in case you were white in round two? Did you go through all the different ramifications? No, I didn't. But uh, I did have a couple openings prepared in case I needed to win with black or with white. Um, yeah, I did that. And uh, an interesting secret weapon bounded up the stairs right as you were about to win and go into the Armageddon. Grandmaster Georgi Kashishvili, who actually has a lot of experience preparing Irina Crush, his student, in this exact type of format. Uh, tell us about how that came about. Yes, yeah, so I didn't even know he was here, and he just came up and told me he was rooting for me and gave me a very good advice. After the first game, he said that nothing is over, you just need to improve two things. First, um, she plays very fast, and don't try to play as fast as her, just do your thing. And second is something I can't remember now. <laughs> I really can't Some remember. witty expression in Georgian or something? No, it was more about the opening, I think. Yes, I just, I'm blanking right now. Do you, do you think that he's especially well suited to be a bit of a mentor, given that he has experience in the exact same situation with Irina? I don't know him well, but he obviously did a very good job today, <laughs> helping me win. Uh, after my second game, he also gave me advice before the Armageddon to improve um, my opening from the first game, if we were to repeat the exact same line to play knight h2, knight g4 instead of pawn g4 and that uh, just gave me a winning position. Yeah, the knight was excellently placed there. Yesterday you told me if it went into Armageddon, you prefer black, but in the drawing of lots, you actually got white. But that turned out a little bit to your advantage because she played right back into the same opening that you got an overwhelming advantage in both games? Yes, I would have preferred black, but because of the opening, it went uh, very smoothly for me because I didn't spend any time and I got a huge advantage on the clock and my position was great. A very informal poll by me was done, and pretty much everybody prefers black because they didn't think a one-minute disadvantage was really that big of a handicap, especially with a two-second increment. Do you feel like it should have been maybe 5-3 or maybe no increment, or what would have been an exactly balanced Armageddon time control? I mean, 5-3 is a little too much, I think, but 5 against 4 is good without increment. It's just that with increment, I feel like that uh, one-minute time difference doesn't make that much of a difference. You can always... Uh, win a winning position if you have two second increment. What can you say overall about uh, Annie Wang's play this tournament? Well, she was incredible. She had the best tournament of her life, but I think this is not the end, obviously. She's just going to get stronger and stronger, and she has a bright future ahead of her. Well, it's not clear yet if she'll qualify for the Olympiad, but you could have tanked and lost on purpose to make sure she was your Olympiad teammate. Any thoughts about doing that? I haven't even thought about that. No, I, I would never tank a game. <laughs> uh, it's a joke, of course. Would you like her on your team? Yes, of course. Um, she, it's good to have a young spirit. I used to be the young one, but not anymore. Um, and the stronger the team, the better, of course. Do you have a dual role in Batumi? Do you have to be the tour guide as well? Well, I It's been a while since you live in Georgia. Yes, I haven't been to Batumi in over a decade, so no, I'll just have one role. <laughs> and uh, you've been pretty unequivocal that playing these tournaments does not really inspire you to play more. But I have to ask again, are we going to see more chess from you before uh, the Olympiad? 
Um, I would say probably not. Maybe one tournament somewhere. Um, the reason I don't play as much is because in the U.S. most of the tournaments have a terrible schedule with two games a day. And I don't enjoy that kind of schedule. That's why I only play the major tournaments where I get to play one game a day. Makes sense. You're $25,000 richer, but you live in Las Vegas. I mean, you could go through that in one night. Uh, tell us how you plan to spend the money. I'm going to go to a casino and bet on black. I'm kidding, of course. Um, I'm just going to save it. <laughs> yeah, I noticed you're wearing black and white, so that was kind of a good theme for today. You didn't really care what color you got in the Armageddon, I guess. Yeah, I was wearing black and white because uh, I wanted to finish in style. Win or lose, I just wanted to finish in style. Well, speaking of style, yesterday Sam Shanklin said he was wearing his lucky shirt. I know a lot of our listeners will claim I'm being a chauvinist by asking about your attire, but hey, just want to remind them I asked Sam yesterday, do you have lucky shoes or any kind of lucky apparel? No, but I do have unlucky <laughs> clothes that after I loosen them, I never wear them again. <laughs> of course, I, I mean, I don't believe in it, but... It affects me psychologically, I guess, so I just don't wear the clothes uh, after I lose them. <laughs> well, my quick mental uh, math is that you've only lost two games in four years, so that means you only have to own three outfits total. Two of them are in the waste bin, and uh, maybe you could just wear this one all the time. I don't know. Yeah, pretty much, and uh, I only wear them when I'm not playing chess. But are you going to go out and get a, a new dress like Arena Crush often does before the closing ceremony? I already have a dress with me, so I'm, I came prepared. <laughs> Uh, both of your U.S. championship wins came with a lot of final round drama. Um, probably you'd rather just win 11-0 and not make it terribly interesting. But it's a little bit more uh, sweet on the back end, knowing that uh, both of these wins that you had in 2016 and this year came with so much uh, pressure at the end. Afterwards, sure, it feels um, even better to look back that I won with such fighting in a fi such fighting style, but uh, during, <laughs> no, it's no fun to have to go through all this playoffs and dramatic last rounds. It's very stressful. You mentioned that your husband is on a plane somewhere right now. Do you think he bought internet on the plane to be able to watch this? Oh, um, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure of it. <laughs> and do you think he's jumping up in his seat? or how, how would you guess his reaction? Because when he watches this, we can compare with what actually happened on that plane. Uh, he probably told everyone around him <laughs> so he could share with the people next to him. Well, I hope he's in an exit row. Um, that way he's got some room to celebrate. Anyway, congratulations, Nazi Pekidzi, a very worthy winner, and you created quite a show for your fans. Thank you very much.